What's up guys, Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles back again yeah, at Sonic Academy for another how to use video. Today I'm taking a look at one of my favorite compressors at the moment. It's a mastering grade compressor. It's the SPL Iron from Plugin Alliance. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look at how this works. Right, here we go guys, uh, SPL's Iron Mastering Compressor, uh, I will say it's a mastering compressor but just as much as home on a, a single track as well. Uh, it is a tube compressor, kind of in the same vein as the famed Fairchild or uh, Manly Verimu. Um, let's, before we get into this, uh, just take a listen to what it sounds like. I've styled in a fairly extreme setting just so you can kind of hear the compression happening. Uh, this is dry. And we're just doing this in a mastering context. Like I said, on single channels, it works amazingly well as well. And this is the compression. Like I said, fairly extreme settings, but you can hear it tightening up that uh, drum loop there quite nicely. Uh, it does function a little bit differently to a lot of other compressors. So we're going to get into the controls now and kind of run through everything and uh, show you how this works. Uh, just quickly along the top here, your usual um, A being uh, functionality that you have at the top. Uh, you have different presets that you can copy and paste between and A, B amongst those. Um, you have a solo mid and a solo for the sides. The bottom panel, uh, the Brainworks uh, add-ons uh, that you see in a lot of their uh, new plugins can be hidden with this button here. And then you have a UI switch, uh, which gives you the three different editions that comes out in the black, the all black. But we'll leave it on red because we all know that red sounds better. Uh, let's just get into the controls. You've got a dual mono compre uh, compressor here, uh, which can be run in stereo mode. We'll get to that in just a sec. Um, let's take a look at the controls first. Uh, you've got to attack and release like you would in any other compressor. You'll notice that these don't actually uh, sync to specific times. They just run six steps from fast to slow. Same goes for the release time. Uh, the reason being that uh, we have this rectifier dial over here, which actually directly affects the attack and release times as well. Uh, now the sort of default one, uh, the slowest of the rectifiers would be the LED. Uh, this one you uh, would use for sort of leveling, uh, long attack times and faster release times. Uh, and it has the slowest uh, attack and release out of the bunch. Um, these three are all fairly slow, uh, the germanium, uh, the two versions of that. And then you get into the silicone, you could hear when we were A-Bing the compressor earlier, uh, the compression's a lot more uh, fast acting and apparent when you get into the silicone and all the way down to the germanium and or the GE and silicone mix whatever that is uh, but that is the shortest and uh, shortest attack and release times and you'll you actually hear some sort of audible distortion happening there with the sort of very very fast uh, uh, times that the compressor is acting in now you have a threshold which is uh, pretty standard with other compressors but you'll notice there's no um, ratio for this compressor at all uh, so the ratio is basically handled by how much you feed into it. So more signal going in and more threshold, the ratio will actually extend and you'll get more compression happening. So um, coming down here, we've got our input trims. These are also step controls. And the reason why they did these step controls on the original one is uh, because it's a dual mono compressor. Uh, so it makes it easier to match the settings on either side. You'll find that on the Shadow Hills uh, compressor as well. Uh, the input uh, can either be a positive or negative, so you can reduce the signal coming in uh, by however many decibels you want. Uh, setting it to zero will have no action at all, and then the plus will basically boost the signal coming in. So this is how you'd actually increase the ratio by boosting the amount going into the compressor and then setting the threshold. And uh, you can adjust uh, the other side as well uh, to balance your uh, gain. 
Um, let's take a look at the middle here. We have a sidechain EQ. These are basically preset curves for the sidechain. Um, best is to actually refer to the manual for this. They have some diagrams uh, that you can actually take a look at what the curves look like. Uh, there is also an additional sidechain, which we'll come to at the bottom here in just a sec. And then you can have an external sidechain as well. So we'll leave that off for now. The tube bias here, um, this will basically affect the bias of the tubes, or the voltage in, in the tubes. And what this will do is it will result in slightly more compression at a higher setting and uh, uh, less compression at a low setting. Um, moving into the middle here, we've got the air base and tape roll off. These are basically circuits that, uh, or, or filters uh, that are applied post compression. The air base is basically a bit of a smiley face kind of vibe. It uh, boosts the lows a little bit and a little bit of an air band as well. Uh, tape roll off uh, will simul simulate a, a tape machine or the fact that you get from that. Uh, it'll essentially kind of. Um, just smooth out the top end a little bit. If you've got quite harsh material, it'll just give you that nice sort of bit of tape warmth, especially rolling off a bit in the in the highs. Um, then you have this interval dial here and this host sync uh, button. So you can set this to host sync or to auto bypass. So this is a feature on the original hardware. So the, the idea behind this is it's it's not great to be sitting in the studio manually bypassing to listen to the effect of the compression. Um, you want to be able to sit in your sweet spot and also, you know, by by manually doing this, you're kind of uh, preempting when there's going to be a change. And the idea by and this is you kind of don't really know when there's going to be a bypass occurring so you can objectively listen to what's actually occurring with the compression. So how this works is auto bypass will have it set to times, you can see there 2.3 seconds or whatever, as you dial that up, higher will be more time, down will be less. If you set this to host sync, it will work in beats and uh, bars instead. So let's just take a listen to that quickly. Uh, we'll set this to host sync, we'll have this down to, let's say two seconds. And let's run it with the compression active. Let me just back back off on this. Balance out the compression. So you'll see how it flicks on and off automatically just so that you can kind of hear what is actually going on with your compression and that you're not uh, sort of confusing yourself by doing that manually. So nice little feature that was on the hardware as well. We'll turn that right down and turn host sync off. The sidechain link that, uh, that you have here is basically uh, the parameter link um, that you have down at the bottom here. Uh, this is on the original hardware as well and then obviously included in the Brandworks add-ons here, uh, which will basically link the left and right compressors together. Um, you can have the sidechain link turned off and you'll see our parameter link is now off and turn the parameter link on. And this way it'll still be syncing the parameters, but it's running in dual mono mode with the side chain link off. Side chain link on, you'll be running it as a stereo compressor. So that pretty much covers most of the um, settings up top here. We're gonna take a look down at the bottom as well. Oh, lastly, we've just got some uh, VU um, settings over here. You can toggle between gain reduction and the output zero and VU plus 10 dBs as well. Now let's take a look at some of this stuff down at the bottom here. These are all the new um, add-ons that Brandworks adds to a lot of their plugins. Uh, you've got TMT modeling built into this one as well. So very much like the uh, SSL channels and their various other channel strips that they do, they model various toler tolerances so that uh, each one of the channels that they've modeled here have slightly different sounds, um, which is really nice if you're using these sort of per channel, maybe in a sort of bus mix. Uh, per bus, you have up to 20 different channels that have been modeled here. Uh, you can turn on the TMT by um, flicking through, or you can flick through each channel here, and you can also randomize the channel as well. So random channel um, 
we'll just select uh, a different one for each of the instances that you have open in a session. And uh, by clicking off the stereo mode, uh, you can have the same channels left and right, just if you want to avoid any sort of differences between the left and right signal, but you can still have each compressor having a different uh, channel like that, but running in stereo instead of the two different channels for the left and right. Uh, parameter link we've covered uh, the MS basically switches the left and right mode into a mid side mode so we can check that out now as we switch that into MS you'll see you have these change up the top here uh, this would be a good thing to turn off the parameter link here now and let's take a listen to what we can do with that so in this case we're compressing a lot of the um, mid and leaving these sides out. Bring it back again, you can see the mid comes back in again. Let's compress these sides. So there you have it, just basically uh, changes this up from a left and right compressor to mid side compression, which is handy in mastering circumstances as well. Um, moving on, we've got the headroom dial here, which is super useful, uh, especially with this being stepped over here. Uh, it's a little bit hard sometimes to balance levels and maybe make finer adjustments. And also with us not having a ratio, you can actually use the headroom to boost the signal in uh, inside of the compressor as well. Check it out now. Let's just whack this back into parameter link and get that back the same. So we'll leave it there and you can see by adjusting the headroom up, we have less compression happening. Let's bring the headroom back down. And I can hear it's really, really crunching the compression a lot. So that's really handy just for fine tuning uh, the signal going into the compressor as well. So now in addition to the EQ curves that you have, the preset curves that are on the original SPL. Um, we also have a high pass uh, filter for the side chain. So if you want to kind of just uh, exclude some of the bottom end uh, when you're doing slightly more heavy compression. Yeah, it's squashing the lows there. Bring that up. You get a lot more of the, the lows coming through. Um, lastly, we got the mono maker as well, which basically cuts, it's a high pass filter for the side uh, signal. Uh, so you see this also on a lot of Brainworks plugins. Um, this is really nice just for tightening up your low end in a mastering situation as well, where you can basically mono out the lows completely and have everything above that sides uh, coming through as well. And then you also have a stereo width dial, which basically amplifies or, or changes the balance between the um, mid and side. And it kind of just gives you slightly more width. And then lastly, a uh, parallel mix, uh, which will let you mix between dry and wet signals for the compressor. Take a look there as well. So full dry. And we can mix in the compressed signal as well. So that pretty much covers it for the Ion Mastering Compressor. It's actually one of my favorite compressors at the moment. I love using this uh, in a mastering situation, actually in conjunction with a VCA compressor like the Elysia Alpha Comp. Um, what I'll do is I'll often set this one to LED and use a fairly slow attack time, somewhere in the middle here, slow release as well. And just um, set it as a leveler. We'll just take a listen quickly. Let's just bring this back down. Style in some compression. Boost it a little bit. Just trying to match the volumes there. So you have very, very transparent leveling happening there. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll actually use a, a secondary compressor like the Elisa uh, 
as a faster compressor just to work with the transients in the track. Uh, very much the same way that the Shadow Hills works as well, where you have an Opto stage and a VCS stage running after that. Um, but I do really like the combination of this with another VCA compressor, Alpha Comp, or even um, Townhouse or VCA, uh, what is it, the Vertigo VCA2. Um, right, that wraps it up for this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you guys again soon right here at Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.